Our scripture this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 41 to 52. Every year his parents went to Jerusalem, went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast, according to the custom. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking, was, thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He said, Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. So this Sunday, the one after Christmas, always feels a bit strange. And I think the years where the Sunday following Christmas Eve service is so close like it was this year, almost amplifies that feeling. You see, we have been working towards a goal. For the past month, at the very least, we have been busy getting things ready for Christmas. In the church, we have been working towards getting things ready for Christmas Eve. We've decorated the sanctuary. We've held our Advent party. We've tapped so many people to be a part of the readings during this season that nobody wants to be the liturgist in January. And we've made sure the candles were good for each week. And the people in the choir have put in extra work to have songs prepared for each service, and it all culminated on Christmas Eve. So on the first Sunday after Christmas, it leaves a lot of us feeling tired. It's been a long and busy season, and we've given so much to make it a magical one, filled with love and worship. The post-Christmas season can leave us feeling drained. You know, during the season... Christmas season, we get a feeling that people are at least trying to be kind to one another. And we feel the presence of Jesus in the interactions with other people. You know, the old Christmas spirit. But after Christmas, we feel like things swing the other way again. People are crabby, they're tired, and they don't seem to have any of that spirit left. The post-Christmas season leaves us feeling with this thought, now what? Now what should we be doing? Do we take a break? Do we just go ahead and phone it in till Lent begins? No, that is not what we are to be doing. That is not what we are called to. But I do believe it's fair for us to acknowledge that it has been a long and tiring season. In our scripture for today, we find the baby Jesus has grown up some. He is now a child, well, a preteen at the age of 12. And if you happen to have someone in your family at that age, or you remember at that age, you do not call them a child. They are no longer a child, and they will remind you of that very quickly. His family had traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover feast, and when they began to leave the city, they traveled for a full day. Before Mary and Joseph realized, Jesus was not with them in that party heading home. Now, I want you to imagine what they must have been feeling. At this point, they had been raising Jesus for 12 years. 
And there's no doubt in my mind that they were panicked because they had lost their child. But I think there must have been some added anxiety at the thought that they had lost the Son of God as well. You see, they were tasked with not only raising a normal human child, but the most important child that had ever been born. Have you ever gotten the feeling you forgot something? Man, that feeling will just eat away at you until you figure out what it is. At least that's what happens to me. Until I can remember what it is I forgot, that's all I can think about. I'm so focused on it. Well, we can feel that way during uh, the post-Christmas season as well. Did I forget to get someone a gift? Was there somewhere I was supposed to go? Did I remember to invite everyone to Christmas service that I wanted to? Now, maybe you've had that feeling, and it turns out to be that you forgot your kid. And I want you to know that it does happen to the best of us. I always like to think of the movie Home Alone, where the mom all of a sudden realizes that they left Kevin at home, and she all of a sudden sits up and just screams, Kevin! Oh, no! You know, that is what it feels like. But if you've ever lost a child that was in your care, you know the sheer panic that can overcome you. Now, when I was a child, I had the habit of hiding in stores. See, I thought it was hilarious to hide in the middle of the old circle clothes racks. If you remember those, you could just go, if you're small enough, and sit right in the middle of them, and no one could see you. And I would hide in there until my parents would begin to panic or get mad and yell my name, and then I would pop out. I know, what a great kid I was, right? But I have been paid back for my transgressions many times over by my own children. Once, when one of them was around three years old, they snuck out of our home in the middle of the day. See, there was a miscommunication over who was to be watching that kid, and they decided to go on an adventure. And we looked for them all through the house and could not find them. And when we went outside, we did find them pretty quickly. Thank the Lord. See, they had walked to the neighbor's house across our little cul-de-sac, and they were riding our neighbor's bike down their driveway. You see, they, much like Jesus, were where we should have known to look for them, because they were about their business. They had always wanted to ride that bike, and our neighbor had always left it outside, and he, I gave it away there, had always noticed that bike and always wanted to ride it and so they took that opportunity and rode it but Jesus had a bit higher goals at the age of 12 than our child did at three he was in the temple and he was listening and he was teaching amazing the people there with his understanding of the scriptures and when Mary and Joseph found him I'm sure it went something like this Jesus where have you been We've been looking everywhere for you. We're worried sick about you. You're supposed to be with our group heading home. What do you mean, where was I? I was here studying in my father's house. Where else would I have been? You see, that is the message for us as well during this post-Christmas season. When we don't feel like we can't remember what we should be doing, well, we should be about our father's business. There are other translations that say he was about his father's business in the temple. And when we feel like there is something that we should be searching for, well, we should be searching for Jesus. We should be looking for him in his father's house, and we should be looking for him in others as well. You see, often we feel let down by the end of the Christmas season, but we don't have to feel that way. If in this season after Christmas we focus our efforts on doing what our Father wants us to be doing and trying to find Jesus in this world, then we will not feel that longing at the loss of the Christmas season. When Pastor Pat was here, each week she would ask us, where did you see Jesus this week? Now that question, what, that question wasn't just one that she decided on one day to throw out there for us. It wasn't just off the cuff that she thought about that. What that question does is it forces you to think about the good things that you see around you. 
It forces you to consider where Jesus is at work in this world. So if we can focus our efforts on looking for Jesus, we will not be disappointed. We will be able to keep the joy of the Christmas season alive. Each and every time we see him in this world is an opportunity to renew our faith. It is an opportunity to praise him and an opportunity to rejoice in his presence in our lives. See, we are truly blessed people when you think about it. There are so many people that spend their lives wondering what it is that I should be doing with my life. It's one of the great existential questions that man has tried to answer throughout time. But those of us that believe do not have this problem. We are to be about the business of our Father. We are supposed to be doing the work of bringing people into his family. And we are supposed to be remembering and looking for our Savior, Jesus Christ, in this world and in the next. So in this season after Christmas, let's do just that. Let's be about the work of the Father and his Son. That way, in case we do forget something, at least we're remembering the most important thing. My challenge for you this week is this. What is one thing you can do to keep the spirit of Christmas alive? Go out and do it. Amen.